The Voyager spacecraft is no doubt an attestation to human brilliance. More than 40 years after its launch, the spacecraft are still diving deep into the cosmos, making them the longest and farthest human-made craft in space. The tenacity of these spacecraft is admirable, and they not only still function after so many years of wandering through the unfavorable conditions of space, but have also been able to send back intriguing and sometimes unusual messages back to Earth. So how exactly have the Voyager spacecraft fared over the years? And what was discovered as they crossed over to interstellar space? Keep watching as we relive the journey of the Voyager spacecraft. The twin spacecraft were both launched in 1977, making it 45 years since the farthest craft departed from Earth. However, though launched some 16 days after its twin, Voyager 2 was launched. Voyager 1 holds the trophy as being the farthest spacecraft away, casually strolling some 14 billion miles away from Earth. The question now is, how exactly have these spacecraft that were never intended to last over a decade breaking limits, now setting new records and making mind-blowing discoveries while still wading through the harsh conditions of space? Built to last about five years, the Voyagers were launched to observe Jupiter and Saturn, as well as the Saturnian rings and the bigger moons of the gas giants. However, the Voyagers seem intent on outliving their designers by not limiting their space exploration to the two planets. Spreading their wings, they've flown through space in a quest to quench their search for wonders and knowledge. In this intriguing and ovation-worthy exploration, they've encountered the faraway ice giants in our solar system and not limited themselves to the solar system by making the leap into interstellar space. Initially designed to be a part of the Mariner program, Voyagers 1 and 2 were intended to be Mariners 11 and 12 as a part of the mission to explore other planets. However, they shifted focus to Jupiter and Saturn and became known as part of the Voyager program. And to the surprise of the team, the Voyagers went on to be stellar examples of space exploration. The Voyagers no doubt have made humanity proud by diving so deep into the cosmos, but the spacecraft do not only have components mounted for high-speed delivery of messages and pictures captured in space, but also contain images and data from Earth. On the Voyager Golden Records, information about the lifestyle of humans, our DNA, anatomy and reproduction, multiple cultures, different languages of greetings, as well as data leading to the location of our planet is detailed. The team made sure not only to include images of humans, but also included those of the other species we share the planet with, animals, plants, and insects alike. This implies that the Voyager spacecraft are not only exploring other celestial bodies, but are also a means of communicating with life beyond our little planet. These potential life forms would get to listen to the recordings of some of the best composers from our planet like Mozart, J.S. Bach, Beethoven, and Stravinsky. So, how has the Voyager survived? While the arrays of transmitters are crucial, they are basically nothing much without the power source. As a matter of fact, if the power source had run out, the Voyager spacecraft would have been incapacitated and therefore hindered from sending messages back to the Earth. Well, considering their distance from the Earth, it would be impossible to rely on solar power. They are so far away that the rays from the sun can't be sufficient to power them. Hence, they opted for a more reliable and local power source, RTG, also known as radioisotope thermoelectric generators. For each Voyager, there are three RTGs, and as their fuel source, they make use of plutonium, 238 and as the isotope decays, heat is produced. The heat produced is then converted to electric energy. At the time of launch, both spacecraft were producing about 470 watts at 30 volts DC. However, as time passed by, this decreased as expected. It seems it isn't only the fuel that is reducing in quantity, but the thermocouples used in the craft have also deteriorated over time. In 2011, the power output of the spacecraft had reduced significantly. The Voyagers were generating about 270 watts, which was just about 76% of the power they were generating at the beginning of the mission. For a spacecraft designed to last just five years, a lot of thought was actually put into the design as an extra source of power was also added on board. 
This extra power source might seem insignificant, but they're actually quite important to their function. You see, the Voyager spacecraft have little thrusters that allow them to face the Earth at necessary times. Most importantly, when they're about to send information back to the team. These thrusters, essential for the reorientation of the spacecraft, require a power source to draw from, and this is where the extra power source comes in, a tank of hydrazine fuel for the thrusters. However, these thrusters also have a limit and would eventually run out and stop working. To tackle this problem, the designers also made sure they had a backup. After defying the intended lifespan of a spacecraft by some 32 years, the main thrusters stopped working and the team had to fall back on the backup thrusters. Impressively, the thrusters were still working despite never being in use for almost four decades. A very remarkable feat for the Voyager. What did Voyager discover in the heliosphere? First up, what is the heliosphere? You can think of the heliosphere as some sort of space or bubble that envelopes the sun as well as the planets orbiting it from the galaxy's energy radiation. In other words, it's more like a shield protecting Earth and other planets from an overload of radiation. And this shield has an outer edge dubbed the heliopause. And it is from the heliopause that interstellar space begins before extending to the dark space far beyond. With Voyager 1 well ahead of Voyager 2, the latter spacecraft was important in confirming data gathered by the former. However, as Voyager 2 neared the boundary of the heliosphere, scientists were greatly interested in its trip because at the point when Voyager 1 made the cross, some equipment on the craft had stopped working. Hence, there was no way to fully monitor its transit. With Voyager 2, we could finally see what occurs to an object as it finds itself within 140 million miles of the heliosphere. This was a huge milestone for humanity, and we got to realize that the plasma circumferencing the craft slowed and increased in temperature and density, but the moment it got to the other side of the boundary, the interstellar medium got significantly hot. We're referring to temperatures as high as 30,000 degrees Celsius or 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is way hotter than imagined. How did the craft then survive this high temperature? Well, the plasma was quite thin and diffuse, thus making the average temperature around the probes maintain cold temperatures. That was a close one for our inquisitive probes. In its transmission, the spacecraft actually confirmed the theory that the heliopause was sort of a leaky border, and these leaks even go both ways. Voyager 1 strolled through the cirrus of interstellar particles that had punctured the heliopause, but when its twin craft came by much later on, it came across a trickle of low energy particles that went as far as 100 million miles beyond the heliopause. At 123 astronomical units, or 11 billion miles from the sun, we might assume that the heliopause is not strongly impacted by our solar system's burning star. However, this seems not to be the case as Voyager has proven that the Sun is still significant outside our solar system, with Voyager 2 data showing that the coronal mass ejections, or CMEs, spat by the Sun go beyond the heliopause to stimulate the effect of reducing the amount of cosmic rays beyond the bubble. With the termination of Voyager 1 ultraviolet spectrometer, its plasma subsystem, its scan platform, and ultraviolet spectrometer observations, data tape recorder, gyroscopic operations, as well as the termination of Voyager 2's scan platform and UVS operations, DTR operations, and CRS heater power down, there would be a time that the spacecraft will no longer be able to power any equipment and would wind up dead beyond the reach of the team on Earth. However, till then, the spacecraft are working hard to ensure that we get a glimpse of the darker side of our universe and widen our knowledge of the mysterious far side. And in spite of the challenges faced on their journey through the cosmos, they have prevailed and continued to shed more light in the vast space way beyond our solar system.